changing the topic to access method. So here is the problem, and this is particularly for, from the wireless point of view because the medium is one. So there is only one air here, and if I speak, you speak, they speak, we are all going to interfere. Right? So there are several ways to share this medium. One is time division multiple access, which means that we divide time. So when I am speaking, you don't speak. Right? And when you are speaking, I don't speak. And the way we do that is by raising hands. So that is what? Time division multiple access. TDMA. That's what we do most of the time in life. TDMA. Right? But what if it is a party? If you did, there are 100 people in this room, right? If there is a TDMA, that one is very efficient or very interesting. <laughs> Would you want to be in that party? Okay, I want to speak. <laughs> right? Now think about this. If everybody is speaking English, there is a lot more interference. If suppose some people speak Chinese, some people speak Arabic, some people speak, you know, Iranian, Hindi, whatever, then everything goes on and there is no interference. Is that true? Because our ears filter out Chinese, my ear. <laughs> they don't understand it. It doesn't matter, right? If you hear Chinese, you know, you will figure out every word of it and your brain will start processing it right there and it will interfere with your thoughts, right? But if I speak Hindi, it won't interfere with your thoughts. So, the thing is that we can tune ourselves to a particular language or particular coding, as we call it, and then we can filter out all other codes, right? So, there is a way to manage that and that is what is called Code Division Multiple Access, CDMA. And that is what we use in parties. Actually, I mean, okay, so all right, I have lied a little bit because in most parties in America, they will probably be all speaking in English. But I'm just saying that will cause a lot more interference. If some people speak different languages, then it will cause less interference. Clear, right? So that's what we are going to see, that we are going to use CDMA most of the time from now on in wireless. All right, so how do we design a code? So one way to design a code is frequency hopping. And frequency hopping works as follows that I is use this frequency for 50 milliseconds and then I will change my frequency to this one for 50 milliseconds and then to that one, to that one, to that one and I'm not going to do it in, in, in a sequential basically fixed order, I'm going to do it in a random order. Okay? And what the way we do the random order is by using a random number generator and the random number generator, the receiver knows. So I, let's say I talk, want to talk to her and I say, okay, here is my random number generator. And now I can keep talking, talking, changing the frequency and she will get the right frequency at the right time. But somebody else doesn't know the random number generator will not be able to go to those frequencies. Right? So they will not be able to listen. They will not be able to tune. Actually, this was designed more for secrecy, for privacy, for military. Right? But now it has become a common method. And actually it was, it was invented by Hedy Lamar, who was an actress and she was working on a piano and something to do with the frequencies on the piano, she figured out that if we generated randomly, you know, this we can do with this and that and that. And now it was then finally ended up with military which we used for a long time and now everything that we do today is kind of uses this. Frequency, hopping, spread spectrum. Now, I want to explain what is spread spectrum, but frequency hopping I have explained. Frequency hopping means that we change the frequency every so little time after so time randomly and we know the random number generator. Right, yeah. Could you still use this with uh, frequency modulation keys? Yeah, right. So, uh, during that time, during that time, when 50 milliseconds, I'm going to send you thousands of bits and they will be using one of those QAMs. You know, it could be frequency modulation, could be QAM. But if your frequency is changing, how, maybe I don't understand, how are you, how are you, are you still listening to it if you're 
tuning into a certain frequency. Yeah, we, we continuously tune to the same frequency. So, I am talking to you. Right? And I tell you, look, I am going to start at um, red frequency and then here is the formula to calculate the next frequency. Right? So, you use that formula, the random number generator and you figure out what is the next frequency. Now, it is going to change to that frequency. You, you switch, I switch. Both. Sender and the receiver. Everybody else does not switch. Everybody else is, you know, somewhere else. Yeah. For the carrier frequency, it's different from the B frequency. B frequency will be over the carrier frequency, and the right. So what she is saying is, when we say frequency here, we are talking about where, how we are going to modulate, what we are going to modulate. On the top of that frequency, you can do lots of modulation, amplitude, frequency, qualm, and all that. Right? Okay. Second point is. The, the goal, actually one thing you can do is you can actually avoid the interference. That is what we are trying to do. <laughs> we are trying to avoid the interference so that even if we both were, I am talking to you on red and he is talking to him on red, they will collide. Right? But the next, even next um, that 50 millisecond, they will not collide. Because I will switch to something else, he will switch to something else. So, there is some interference but this will be kind of, you know, gone quickly. So, this random number generator is your code. Actually, random number generator is probably the same. You know how the random number generators work. In the random number generator, you put a seed and the next number comes out. You put that and you get the next number comes out. The seed is your code. You put a different seed than I put. Okay. If you put a different seed, you get a different sequence. I put a different seed, I get a different sequence. Is that clear to everybody? How the random number generators work? So, basically, we all have a different code, that means a different seed. We all know the same random number generator. You can use all use the same random number generator, but we have a different code and therefore we can all talk at the same time in the same room. Yeah. How bad is it for collisions between those? Do you, do you have to completely repeat, repeat the message the next 15 milliseconds or do you still sort of filter it out? And yeah, right, right. So the thing is, if suppose two people spoke at the same time, how bad is the message? It depends. If I am just talking at the same near to you at the same time, you know, your ears will pop out. But if I am here and you, know, <laughs> you are there, they will not. So, you know, there are, there are other possibilities. So, the, you can, both people can talk at the same frequency and then the interference will depend upon so many things. Right? But we are talking at the different frequencies then you know, then there are less things to worry about. All right. But if you were to plot the signal over a long time, normally the signals in a frequency look like this. They are at one frequency and the noise is everywhere. Signal is at one frequency and the noise is everywhere. But with frequency hopping, the signal is also everywhere. Right? Some power is here, some power is there, some power is there, some power is there. So, this is why it is called spread spectrum. What we have done is, we have basically make the signal look like noise. It is everywhere. Okay. So, this is called frequency hopping spread spectrum, FHSS. There is another way to spread the spectrum, our code, and that is very simple. Basically, you select a code, we select a code, and let us say we selected an L code which is 01001010. I think it is 11 bits. So, we selected the 11 <laughs> bits like this to be 0 and the opposite of that to be 1. And somebody else selected some other 11 bit number to be 0 and 1 and you know and so on so forth. Everybody selects a different code. So, whenever we want to send a 0, instead of sending 1, one bit, we send 11 bits like this. And when we want to send a 1, we send 11 bits like that. So now, lot of people can talk. And I am looking for this kind of bit pattern. If, there is, if it is something any different than that, then we do not take it. We just reject it right there. Okay? So again, with different codes, many people can talk in the same room. So this is called code. Um, basically, direct sequence. This is called direct sequence spread spectrum, DSSS. Now, this has the same effect for spread spectrum. If you see the spectrum of this signal, 
normally with time with, with big pulses you will look like this with this it will look like that it's, it is spread it's not at one place okay so that's why it is direct sequence is spread spectrum so the signal bandwidth is much larger than data bandwidth so your data has only one bit per second but the signal has 11 bits per second you know or you know actually cycles or whatever way you want to measure it it will be a lot more okay, you are sending 11 times more information so that is called direct sequence spread spectrum all right so we now heard two different spread spectrum techniques now all of these words will be used when we talk about wi-fi bluetooth lte wimax because all of these use these things for example just to give you an example bluetooth uses frequency hopping spread spectrum so when i have bluetooth on which is on right now and your bluetooth is on which is on right now they are all hopping all over so frequency hopping is very common now and um, and and dss is very common now wi-fi uses quite a bit of that okay so i'm introducing all these terms so that when we come to really wi-fi describing wi-fi and i use the word frequency hopping you know what it is <coughs> 